Nineteen. My question. Uh, you know, some there was a fire. And some of these paintings were burned. Yes. How many? Uh, what? Do we know anything about those paintings? And yes, the second sir. question is, uh, you know, he committed suicide when he had, he had cancer. What what drove him to suicide? I mean, his wife had left him and all that. But what drove him? And this is psychological. I don't know. This time yesterday, well, uh, 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 early afternoon, we were all in Sherman, Connecticut, trying to find the place where he committed suicide. Um, and we were looking at this beautiful spot in the wood. Uh, and, and we all of us, when I say we, I mean my wife, my sister-in-law, myself, we we're all deeply involved. And without any of us saying much, we decided to, you, you can't really give an answer to that, to who, why somebody could have suicide. He certainly had lots of reasons to end his life. He'd had a car accident, so he wasn't sure whether his painting arm would ever function again. Um, in the car accident, he, he couldn't use his arm anymore. Uh, the paintings that he'd done in 1947, nobody said that they were great paintings. Um, he had the impression that other people were coming up and overtaking him, like uh, Pollock, of course, had exhibitions with Peggy Guggenheim. Peggy Guggenheim was not interested in Gorky because he belonged to the Surrealists rather than the New Wave. Uh, and the French Surrealist painters had gone back to France and leaving a slightly um, well, there's an Italian word, puzzoso. Puzzoso means stink. It means puzzoso, sort of another. It means somebody is a little bit uh, head in the air. They, the French snobby, snobby. snobby. So uh, the French surreal, being picked up by the French surrealists didn't do Gorky any good in the long run. It was fine at the time, at the beginning of the war, when these people had a certain amount of glamour. Uh, but in 1947, 48. These were out. They were. They made no impression. So, that if you add it all up, um, and yeah, exactly. Now, what was the other question? Uh, the the, 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 the fire. Ah, the things have got burnt. Okay. What do, what do you know about those things? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in 1945, he spent most of the year in um, Roxbury, Connecticut, in a house which was lent to him by David Hare, who was a sculptor connected with it. Um, Gorky didn't like that lot Roxbury. It was a little bit sort of shishi as landscape goes. So he took over the studio of David Hare, put all the sculptures in one corner, and put the drawings that he'd made in Virginia up on the walls, and he made paintings from the drawings. So, uh, the paintings are uh, uh, the paintings he made, which we, we have to reconstruct a little bit. Uh, are from drawings that he'd made in Virginia of the previous two years. Um, he managed to send a certain amount of these works to um, uh, his dealer in New York at the end of the year, but most of them were taken to the, another borrowed studio, this time in, in Sherman, Connecticut. Uh, and this is the, the studio which burned down. But uh, although it was definitely very tragic, uh, the core of the loss were the paintings he'd made in 1945. It was not as if he'd lost the whole of his past. It was a very specific group of works that he made in the previous year. And he was confident that he could repaint them. And I think that he probably did repaint them, because in this final year of 1947, when he produced such a lot, he produced 46 paintings or something, uh, a lot of these are from drawings done in 1944. So, it's possible that he re was replacing the things which were destroyed in the fire two years later when finally he could find a place to work. I mean, Gorky's problems in a sense were very simple. He needed a place to work to make paintings. And he After didn't the find them, find that for 18 months, you know. After the accident? The uh, no, no, the, 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 no the, the accident is fine in the last weeks of Gorky's life. Uh, oh. the, there's this, this um, well, this business of his wife leaving him for one weekend, which had a terrible effect. He, he, he couldn't bear uh, any woman leaving him. I mean, it's not as if his wife was the first wife he had, or the first woman he tried to live with. He'd lived with about five women. And if they showed shine, signs of wanting any independence, it would drive him completely nuts. You know, he, his, his response was, was violent. And 
you can't really, I don't know if you can treat Armenian women like that, <laughs> Hand, hands up, hands up. But you certainly can't treat um, American women, you know, that, that's... <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that's been a long, long... I think we have time for one more question. But excuse me, he also had cancer, didn't he? Yes, he had cancer. Now, was it in remission? Or was it no, well, uh, we don't know that. The medical records have gone. Uh, but we think it, uh, that the particular cancer that he had uh, in, in uh, uh, the statistics at that time were um, if he survived five years, then he, he, you could call it remission. But you couldn't call it uh, remission before it survived five years. And if not, then I think he had a 25 or 25, 30 percent chance of having had it cured. In other words, he had a 70 percent chance of, of um, still having cancer somewhere. And as far as one can tell, the doctor thought that he was in a pretty bad way. I have one final question. Uh, during, the, during, the, during the 1930s, it wasn't uncommon for a lot of these artists to work for the government. Uh, was he employed independently at this time during the 30s, or did he work for the government? He worked for the government. Okay. He was very good at keeping on the lists of the, of the Federal Art Project. The Federal Art Project had moments when, you know, people would try to purge, get rid of those who weren't U.S. citizens, for instance, and he should have been eliminated because he wasn't a, a U.S. citizen until 1939. But he managed to stick in there. Nobody knows quite how. I think that the, the fact that he produced these abstract murals for Newark uh, meant that he was something of a hero. Mm -hmm. That is to say, somebody in the Federal Art Project saying, it's okay with Gorky, you know, keep him on the list. Well, when they discovered the whitewashed painting walls at the Newark airport were covering Gorky paintings, were they able to salvage those? And if so, where did they wind up? Yeah, they salvaged two of them. Two out of, uh, I think there were 11 panels. Uh, and they're now in the Newark Museum. And they'll be in Philadelphia. Can well, I say something sure, about that? Sure, sure. When the Whistler House had, um, when we had to have our paintings restored, we took them to Williamstown. And the day we went, we went upstairs to the restoration room. It's a huge facility out next to the Clark Museum. And we walked into the restoration room, and there they were, the two murals that were in the New York airport. And they were, we had asked if we wanted to find out who owned them. Of course, we, you know, they wouldn't tell us. But then when we went back again to pick up our paintings, they were there again, and they were working on them. Um, so it was quite interesting to see them not displayed up, you know, in a museum, but they will be part of the Philadelphia Museum. Uh, technically, they belong to the Port Authority of the City of New York. Don't ask me why. It's one of those WPA things. But the uh, Port Authority of the Port of New York have lent it on, on long-term loan to the Newark Museum, which is where they belong. Well, thank you very much. Um, appreciate it. Mark and, um, and Nancy and for all of us here at NASA, I want to thank you for coming tonight. And I just want to remind you, uh, we have a registration form. If, uh, uh, if you are interested in uh, joining uh, NASA members uh, for a trip from Boston area uh, to Lowell on October 31st, we'll be departing here at 9.30 in the morning and uh, returning from Lowell at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The reservation form is here at the uh, National. Thank you again. Thank you.